Hey guys, this is Frenzy. I bring you a game from IEM New York between Acer Elfie spawning as the Red Protoss in the bottom position and Fruit Dealer, which is using this at uh, this account, Rise, uh, spawning as the Yellow Zerg in the top position. So it's going to be a Zerg versus Protoss on Terminus, RE, SE, one of those. One of them has these destructible rocks, the other does not. I'm not exactly sure which is which. Um, but this is the version with the destruct destructible rocks, so that third base is going to be a little bit more vulnerable in the mid game. So, uh, Fruit Dealer, one of those players, I believe he won the first ever GSL for StarCraft 2. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but he was definitely a GSL winner, winner um, early in his career and then kind of fell off the radar, and nobody's really heard of him all that much. I believe he's in Code B now. Might be in Code A. I'm don't follow the GSL that much. Um, Elfie, definitely the runner-up for uh, IEM China, so we'll have to see if he has what it takes to actually take on this Korean Zerg, who, you know, fell off the radar a little bit, but he can definitely show some talent against foreign players. So we are going to see a 15 hatchery coming out from f for Fruit Dealer. Um, likewise, we actually are not going to see a Forge Fast Expand from Elfie. That's very um, different. And could be a little bit da dangerous if Fruit Dealer does not drone scout this and actually takes his third early base. Because uh, he can definitely foregate and just punish that. And I know a lot of Zergs just don't scout on these bigger maps because they almost 100% assume that the uh, Protoss will be going for that Forge Fast Expand. Because it's like 9 times out of 10 they will be going for that. But not definitely not the case here. So we'll be behind economically. Um, but can put on some early pressure. So we actually see the gas before the pool here. So he's going to be able to get his speed very quickly. Um, it might have been pool after gas, but it was very close. And actually we do see a fake out pylon here. So he's really trying to throw Fruit Dealer off with this pylon. Make him think that he went Forge first. Might let it finish even. No, he does not. Just to extra fake out uh, Fruit Dealer. Make these couple extra drones come down beforehand. We'll actually have to wait around here for a little amount of time before this hatchery finishes. Not that big of a deal. Would be actually surprised if Fruit Dealer did not let those return straight back. He does indeed let them go back to the natural hatchery and start mining there. Um, but just a little bit extra to throw Fruit Dealer off. We see Fruit Dealer still has not scouted this main base. So I'm going to be interested if he just takes his third at the normal timing, which is around 5 minutes if you're going for a longer macro game. And we actually see a Chrono Boosted Stalker along with another Stalker coming out. And we'll be probably taking his expansion behind this, so we probably won't see that early pressure that I was talking about. Now, with this same build here, if Fruit Dealer does decide to take this third base, and Alfie does not actually react accordingly, um, he will be extremely far behind in the a longer macro game, so really excited to see what's actually going to happen. It looks like Fruit Dealer is going to scout in with these Zerglings to make sure of that Forge Fast Expander would not actually happen, and so he may not uh, take down that all that quickly. He also know with this two Stalker timing as well. Um, with this Stalker being out this early, he probably knows that there was no Forge Fast Expansion. I don't think you can actually get both of those buildings up all that quickly. So these are just trying to poke into a little bit of damage. We did see a canceled spine crawler. He actually loses that stalker, which is a pretty big deal. That could have definitely been microed a, a lot better. If we look in the units lost, he's actually higher in the units lost tab now. And going up to three gateways now. So it was a one gateway expand with that double stalker pressure and now going up into a three gate. And we'll have to see if he continues to put on warp gate pressure or if he's going to go for something else. As well, we do not quite see uh, a third base coming up for Fruit Dealer yet. He's instead going for a lair and a tech route. So we'll have to see if he puts on some early pressure with whatever tech he chooses to go. Or if he's just being safe, maybe a per, uh, precaution for going Muta to, de to de deny any six-gate pressure builds that might come up. This is a definitely a very wide-open map and great for Mutalisks. I would love to see Fruit Dealer go Mutas here and taking base way on the outsides of the map and just constantly harassing Elfie. It's a very good map for that. So we see these Zerglings trying to pick away at those rocks. And... 
that stalker is going to come out and force them back a little bit, but he'll have to be very careful with that stalker not to get surrounded. We do see quite a few sentries coming up. We see a robo coming up, a uh, facility. So probably just going to tr uh, go down the Colossus tech route. We could see some immortal timing pushes, but with only having four gateways at the moment, we probably won't. We see the Spire coming up now, so it was a Mutalist uh, build, but two base versus two base isn't that great of that great of a situation for Fruit Dealer to be in. Um, there isn't that many Stalkers out. If we look, there is only still that one Stalker, so this could actually do a little bit of damage if um, Elfie does not scout this and react accordingly. But we do see this Hallucinated Phoenix, and that's probably going to come over here and scout directly to that Spire. And he does see that Spire, so he will know exactly what's up. Also shooting away this Overlord, he's going to have to reposition this Overlord to uh, put Creep on it or it will die. So that uh, that hallucination definitely paid off. And I have to say, for every Protoss is out, that is out there, research hallucination if you were not going Stargate. you n Or at least getting an Observer. Like with this Robo Facility, he could have gotten an Observer. And, you know, he's already getting one. But it's going to be a lot later than a hallucinated phoenix could actually scout. And it just it pays for itself so much throughout the entire game, getting that hallucination. He is actually going up to three stargates right now. And these zerglings are actually going to get in and see at least two of them. It looks like the, he saw all three of those. So is he actually going to... Or actually, that, were those the stargates? No, it was not. He saw two of the Stargates. Not really sure if he clicked on them. That's the only way he would have known that they were Stargates. But three Stargates is a lot. And now he's going to see absolutely everything with this huge ling run by. And he's going to be able to react accordingly to that. However, three Stargates is actually so all-in. Like, you can barely produce this many Phoenixes. But getting this many Phoenixes, it begins to get out of hand. Um, this pylon is actually powering a lot of structures here if he, t if he does take that down very interesting for Fruit Dealer to actually notice that. And uh, this three Stargate was in response to this Spire being spotted. It's going to shut down all Mutalist harass. Um, this is actually a responsive move, and most people say, I've never actually been in the pos this position myself, but most people say you cannot reactively build Phoenixes um, after you see Muta. That Muta will just kill it. So we'll have to see. Um, but that if you're already going Phoenix, already going Stargate, that Phoenixes can counter Muta. So we'll have to see what happens here. It looks like there's enough Mutas to actually take this, but it looks like if he does retreat, this is not going to work for him. He needs to engage. All of these Mutas will fall. Yeah, this is actually going extremely bad for Fruit Dealer right now. Elfie is just walking all over Fruit Dealer. Um, that is terrible... The, the whole Spire attack is going to be pretty much forfeit now. We're going to see some Corruptors come out, which will be able to combat the Phoenixes, but Elfie will be free to take this third base, and there's going to be absolutely no pressure on it whatsoever. He can mix these five Corruptors in with some Mutalis, and he'll be pretty safe against Phoenixes. But at the moment, um, these Phoenixes are just going to pretty much have free reign of Fruit Dealer's base. So these uh, Corruptors are coming out now. He needs to get them all grouped in together, or it's not going to work out for him. And a nice transfer is going down on that Corruptor. Going to force these Phoenixes back momentarily. Um, but it looks like they're just going to come in for another angle. Try to put some pressure. We do see this proxy base over here for Deer as well. So he's on four, base, b four bases before uh, Protoss actually took their third. But still not a bad timing on that third for Elfie, and being able to shut down that Mutalist Harass, he's very far ahead right now. I really like that reactiveness. Um, I wish that Fruit Dealer didn't try to retreat. You cannot retreat with Mutas against uh, Phoenixes. You just have to have enough. I mean, it's really, really important. As soon as he scouted those three Stargates, maybe he should have turned around and built up a couple of these Corruptors in with his army. Or just stopped going... Uh, mutas all together. Maybe even gotten some infestors with them. I'm not exactly sure what he needed to do, but... Now these phoenixes and corruptors are going to fly right next to each other, and this is not going to go well for Alfie. He cannot engage these ar this army. Um, the corruptor does, I believe, outrange a phoenix. Yes, it does. So, uh, that's why you cannot micro phoenixes against them as, 
and especially because they go do extra damage versus light units. Corruptors are armored, so um, definitely corruptors pretty good response into the against these phoenixes since he already had the spire up. They'll also be good against the Colossus tech switch that we see coming. A lot of these queens going down, a lot of overlords going down, supply blocking uh, fruit dealer quite a bit here. But this Corruptor is doing pretty good against this Phoenix Harass that we see. I'm going to actually probably lose another Queen if he doesn't be careful. Did save that Overlord for a little while. Looks like he's going to get a nice volley off on these Phoenixes. Going to kill at least two of them. And engaging for way too long, Elfie was. Losing three of those Phoenixes. And one very close to dying there. A lot of Corruption going down on these Phoenixes. Meanwhile, we just see this third base coming up for Alfie. He's not really doing all that much, going up on, on a lot of gateways here, and just going to transition into a very strong death ball unit um, with Colossus and a lot of stalkers, it looks like. We already have Blink on the way, plus two ground weapons. Not that much going on in the Protoss' side of things. Uh, we see a fifth base coming up for Fruit Dealer. There are a couple drones over here at this mining base, but not all that many. It hasn't quite been scouted yet from Alfie, uh, but if he flies over in that direction, it will work out for him. Now, we see a ton of roaches coming across the map. However, they're very close in supply, and this is not going to work out for Fruit Dealer. I do not see this army faring well against all these sentries, unless he can catch them out of position, which he cannot. Very nice force fields from Alfie, being able to deny those roaches entry. And this is going to be terrible if he gets force fields going off. He could have gotten his whole army segmented in with these gateways and just laid waste to him from the high ground. That was an extremely scary situation for Fruit Dealer to be in. And I have to admit, Alfie is just doing an amazing job against Fruit Dealer in this game. We do see a macro hatchery coming up, um, and I believe Hive is on the way. Yes, it is. Um, so we'll have to see if he can get maybe some Broodlords out. This could swing back into Fruit Dealer's favor, but this army from Alfie is moving out, and I don't think there's enough here to deal with the death ball that Alfie has up. And he's seeing this, trying to retreat, but these force fields are so good. He does have broad movement, but he's taking so much damage here. Killing off all of the Corruptors before they can actually do any damage. And there's just not enough Roaches here. A lot of Lings as well. Uh, but with two Colossus here, that's actually going to be very difficult to do any damage with those Zerglings. We still have five Sentries in this mix as well, so good force fields can completely negate these Zerglings. Don't have quite that much energy on them, but we'll have to see. They're going to try to get this Nexus cancel. They should get that. And wisely pulling back here because he cannot really engage this army. I'd love to see some counterattacks through this area or this area and try to do a little bit of damage because there's really not much he's going to be able to do to engage this army right now. He needs to buy himself some time until his Hive Tech can kicks in. But it looks like he really wants to fight this, and I think this is going to go extremely badly for Fruit Dealer. Getting some nice fungals down on this army. Not allowing the Blink Stalkers to actually micro correctly against this, but the Colossus is just doing so much damage. We have 13 and 14 kills on these Colossus. Col one Colossus will fall, but everything else for Fruit Dealer is getting cleaned up here. We see a 30 supply advantage for the Protoss, and that is not the position you want to be in. Now we see a counterattack going after some of these reinforcing Stalkers. Needs to pull back and try to do a little bit of damage. This is not the area to do it, though. I'd love to see him cut into this natural base and try to go into this probe line. Maybe force this uh, death ball to turn around for a little while because he needs to buy himself some time. But it looks like he will not be doing that. And I think this is going to spell GG for Fruit Dealer. He's on a similar economy to Protoss, actually a little bit above it, but with just this huge army out for Fruit Dealer, or for Elfie, excuse me. Uh, I don't really see. We do see quite a bit of units here. But a lot of it's Zerglings. Not too many Roaches, a couple Infestors, but really not enough to take down these Stalkers, I believe. And Alfie is pulling back for the moment, which is not a terrible decision, considering he did get this fourth base online. He could sit here and macro up, get a maxed out army, and then push again, and I don't think Fruit Dealer is going to be able to deal with it at all. We do see Greater Spire just got started. It could actually be finished now, had he uh, started that right when Hive finished. And this would be a perfect time to throw in some Broodlords. It might actually be able to get him back into this game, but it, I believe Elfie's attack should come before that Spire, fin or before the Greater Spire finishes, excuse me. 
We also saw a hallucinated phoenix did come through here. Probably got a spot on this Greater Spire building. I'm going to check that really quickly. Okay, we did not. he did not see that uh, with that hallucinated phoenix, but... We'll have to see if he does do a timing attack. He is maxed out now, and it looks like that is the timing he's waiting for. We have plus three, almost ready to finish, but I don't think he should wait for that. This is his timing right before Broodlords come out. Um, and I would love to see him starting to tech up to a mothership. That's really the main counter to Broodlords at the moment. And saying that, I hope no Protoss has watched this watch this video and start using motherships because I do not want to see them on the ladder. I hate motherships. Good Archon use can completely shut down the Zerg army. And as soon as they get Broodlords and lose their mobility, it's just so hard to come back from as a Zerg. So we see these Blink Stalkers doing an offensive Blink, killing off a couple of these Zerglings, not doing huge amounts of damage, but still a 20 supply lead for the Protoss here. And seven Broodlords being morphed. If he can actually buy time and not engage until these Broodlords come out, um, he does have a chance to take on this army right now, but a big Blink killing off two Broodlords before they're actually able to get their volley off. There's only three Broodlords right here. Uh, attacking this army, and then big offensive blink yet again. Nice fundals going on in this whole army for Elfie, and Elfie's army is falling quite a bit, but so is the Zergs here, and Fruit Dealer, very, very close battle, but it looks like Elfie has just a little bit enough um, to be able to win that battle, and keeping his three Colossus alive was huge. We have 46 kills, 20 kills, and 17 kills on these Colossus. And they were really the main uh, component to that last battle that let it go so much in Elfie's favor. Now, Elfie almost remaxed almost a 50 supply advantage. Now, is a 50 60 supply advantage, rather. And there's nothing that Fruit Dealer is going to be able to do. And GG from Fruit Dealer. Elfie's going to go up 1 0 in the series. Extremely good play from Elfie. Really like to see that. And uh, I'm going to jump into the next game. So if you want to check that out, go to blip.tv slash frenzy starcraft. And yeah, thanks for watching.